What inspired you to bring acupuncture into the Institute? To be honest, just that I see that these patients are on so many, they put me so many avenues to get help. And then they come here and they're taking a list of medications and they take a handful of supplements. Supplements are not bad. The idea is offering them something that they can do that doesn't involve a side effect or an interaction with another medication or drug. And they will get better. You know, it's hard to say when they're taking 10, 12 drugs, what is it really that's making them effect? Hey guys, it's Haley Pomeroy. I'm the Assistant Director of the Integrative Medicine Program at the Institute for Neuroimmune Medicine here at KPCOM. And today, back by popular demand, I uh, got Dr. Jackie Hunko to come back in and talk to us about a subject we touched base on in one of our previous podcasts, but the feedback was really clear that people need more information about what you do, Dr. Hunko, and specifically about acupuncture. And so thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. And um, good to see you. And thank you. And I'm excited to talk about this. Thank you, Mary. Good to be back. It is. It's it's always fun when we have time together. I, I love to come into your clinic and get my little beads in my ears, my auricular points that you always tell me about for stress. I love it. It helps me so much. And so I want to jump in. I know you do so many different integrative modalities in our institute and in the clinic, um, but I want to talk specifically about acupuncture. Can you give me a little bit of, of, of the basics of acupuncture? A lot of people out there think that it's just popping needles randomly kind of in the body. So can you tell us what acupuncture is? Okay, well, acupuncture is just the insertion, you know, called puncture, the puncture, the skin. So it's the insertion of thin needles in different areas of the body, depending on what needs to be addressed. And it's been around for thousands of years. And we use it for, it can be used for anything. And when I mean anything, I mean anything from, you know, from hair loss, the cosmetic, the pain, the environment response, sleep. I mean, it's amazing what it does. And it's crazy because I think a lot of times people think of it a lot for pain, right? It's such a critical part for our patient population that's dealing with chronic fatigue or viral reactivation or individuals that, you know, can't sleep. And so I kind of grab some of those topics a little bit. And and with acupuncture, are you putting them just randomly in the body or are there strategic places that the needles are placed? From acupuncture, there's about... 360 acupuncture. Oh. There were, you know, the Ch- Chinese came up with thousands of years ago. So, and, and it's interesting because those acupuncture points are in areas of the body that contain, now there's been studies done that they've been able to dissect the batteries and see that where those, um, acupuncture needles are placed with actually neurovascular nodes there that contain their, um, a large amount of sensory fibers, blood vessels, lymphatics, so now we're able to see, you know, what happens exactly when you insert a needle and, you know, the, the systemic effects that it has. So, so we call those kind of, are those meridians that, that, is that the right term or are they acupuncture points or what are they called where the needles go in? The meridians are like a network. I would say it's like mm-hmm. a, a big, it's like Grand Central Station. And then you have the little trains that go through the different little, through that station itself or the little subsets of that. So, the acupuncture points are along di- are long different meridians in itself. When so you use puncture point, it's gonna exert a different effect depending what part what part of the body is needled. You used a term that I just want to go back to really quick. You said that those acupuncture points, they've now shown that there are particular nerve endings or vascular tissue. Explain that a little bit to me. Well, now we we, we learn a lot about the fascia. And then the fascia is just one big network of, connect, of connective tissue from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And within the fascia, the connective tissue, there's neuro, there's nerve fibers. And when those nerve fibers are stimulated and stretched, it causes an effect within the body. You know, whether it's, you know, it also stimulates the brain to release different endorphins and peptides, which are good, um, substances to be released. If, I mean, there's so many hormones to be regulated. And so, so I always think of like if, it, you know, 
that nerve and that the muscle contraction you know in the tissue like if you get goosebumps and and your hair sticks up on your arm or if you touch something that's hot you automatically pull it away just the brain reaction that happens and so in these acupuncture points there's a vascular component and a nervous system component and each one is correlated with a particular system or function in the body is that right right so so are there certain points so a lot of our community and and as we've interviewed a bunch of people the commonality seems to be stress and sleep are two big components that get dysregulated when a person's dealing with chronic fatigue, chronic illness, viral reactivation, COVID long haulers. How does acupuncture, because we use it so, it's so impactful clinically in our clinic, but how how can I explain to people how acupuncture can affect sleep and stress? Well, for sleep, I mean, well, let's start with stress, but I think okay. it be the foundation of everything. You know, we all have stress. I mean, stress is just the, the automatic part of the autonomic nervous system is upregulated. So you're in that sympathetic drive, meaning like, you know, you're being chased by a tiger or a lion. And you're always, you know, your heart rate goes up, everything goes up. So what acupuncture does, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite. So that's when you're, everything is in rest mode. You know, your heart rate slows down, your breathing slows down. You know, you're able to digest foods, but it's a good, it's good to relax. So, what, so that's one of the beauties of acupuncture is able to get you into the parasympathetic. So when a person gets, is under stress and the stress is gone, let's say a tiger's chasing them and, and it's gone. There's, I understand like there's memory, there's cell memory, but do we see with our patients that sometimes the drive or the stress drive doesn't re-regulate itself naturally? Oh, yeah, they have, you know, dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. So this is going to help bring that back into normality. And, you know, when patients always ask me, you know, how, well, and I'm sure we're going to address that, how long is that going to happen off the first acupuncture treatment? Because, I mean, it took a while to get there. I always explain it's like going to the gym. You go to the gym, you know, you want to get healthy. You're not going to get muscles and build the endurance in one exercise one day at the gym. You right. We've been in order to get the benefit. Acupuncture is the same way. It works over time. And, I, and when I'm going to stick on stress for a second because it's interesting. I think sometimes so many patients go into their doctors and their doctors say, you know, you need to stress less or even you need to implement some stress reducing techniques like, you know, keep your technology away from your bed or, um, you know, don't get up, take 30 minutes or 10 minutes to breathe or meditate. But what I what I've seen with a lot of individuals in this situation is is they really can't re regulate on their own, and and that for me, you know, kind of on that outside, that's where I see the acupuncture being so important because it happens for their body instead of them doing it for their body. It's it's like a, this. Yeah, explain that to me a little bit. So 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 when I when I get people and they say my doc says I just need to be less stressed and I just laugh. I go, did they give a solution? Or they feel judged by by coming in and saying, you know, I feel I'm tired and wired. I feel that that nervous system drive. It's it's I'm I've anxiety. And that's one of the times when I just want to grab them and say, please go see Dr. Hunko or get into acupuncture because sometimes you can't just think your way out of re-regulating your stress hormones or your nervous system. Right. And you're right. When you said the stress hormones, this is one of the other things. You know, we stay in that, you know, the cortisol goes up. You're going to stay. There's so many factors involved. It's not just, you know, the adrenergic, the adrenergic response, and, you know, the cortisol and everything. It's, it's also, you know, the brain telling us, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm stressed. I have anxiety. I can't sleep. So all these things do get better. And I always, one of the things I'm very big on, you know, is breathing exercise. It's a long way. You know, and now when I have, when I'm needling patients in the clinic, Oh, so, you know, when they have the needles out, so, you know, start doing some nice deep breathing, it sort of like, you know, augments the the benefit of the acupuncture. Absolutely. So, so with stress specifically, when a person comes in and they have acupuncture, when, when we're trying to re-regulate the, you know, we're, we, in our clinic, we look a lot at the immune system and the central nervous system. When we're trying to re-regulate things, how often do you think 
when people are receiving it, I, I know it works for my body, but in general, in our patient population or people dealing with chronic illness, how many times a week should they come in? Well, it's good to tell like once, at least once or twice a week, at least so we get the things under control for chronic conditions, which it could take from six to eight sessions, and then we could space it apart a little more. If you want to twice a week, it's the best option. So for me, I was, my goal, I had a personal goal to come off of my autoimmune medication. I was on, I shared with you, I was on prednisone and on an anti-rejection drug. My health goal for myself was to try to re-regulate my hormone system and my autonomic nervous system. So I was diligent about twice a week with acupuncture because I couldn't, I just couldn't think my way or even meditate my way out of it. And there was something about the acupuncture that it was kind of like it, I, I felt like my electrical system was shortwired and it was like acupuncture came in and put like all new cabling in for me. I don't know how else to explain it, but it was really the feedback loop. How, why did I feel that way? What? And another thing I mentioned, the effects are cumulative. So over time yes. you have to get, the better it's going to get. And it's going to last longer. Not only the cumulative in your in the response of your day, day, but it's going to last longer. So those periods that you feel less stressed, those periods that you're sleeping better, are going to get better the more you get the treatment. And I've always wondered, like, I feel better f- super fast. So when I bring acupuncture back into my wellness protocol, it's it's kind of like riding a bike. It's like my body goes, oh, yeah, I remember this. Where in the beginning, I did it because I didn't really have a lot of other options. I had maxed out my medication. I felt like I had maxed out my exercise. I was, you know, die hard into the nutrition piece. So it was like, I, I felt like I did it regularly because I had to. And then all of a sudden it started making drastic changes in my immune system, in my labs. And then now when I do it again, my it's like a familiar friend, like my body just responds. Is that cell memory or what would, again, what's kind of happening? But that's, and that's what usually I recommend is once you've gone to the point where you're feeling better, you don't need to come every week. Because I know some patients where I was, oh, it's, you know, it's really unaffordable. It, really, it can be pricey if you need to come once or twice a week for months. But then you could just come once a month or once every two months and your body does a reset. And it's so, great. Yeah. It's, it was, it was life changing for me. Uh, I'm, I'm constantly fascinated by it, but also it made a huge impact. Let's go to, hormones a little bit. So we've seen a lot of individuals with with autonomic dysregulation, like in POTS, right? And then we've also seen a lot of people that have irregular periods or things that that seem to have an, an expression in the body that are that have a hormone component. Why is acupuncture so profound with hormone re-regulation? You know, the, unfortunately, the studies of why and how are not there yet. But we know it works because when I've seen patients over, you know, my 20 years of doing this, and you know, have benefited from, you know, the painful period from infertility, low libido, weight gain, weight loss. I mean, weight gain is a big thing. People with obesity, which is hormonal based, they do great once you start acupuncture. Mm-hmm. The regular menses, it regulates the menstrual period. So it's not only, you know, the, the people say, okay, weight gain is a lot of things you can do yet, but the regular menses, or endometriosis, polycystic ovary syndrome, all those things are hormonal and it, it works. Now, how we're, we're not, we haven't done enough studies yet. And in China, they have, but we here in the United States, we're a little bit behind on those studies. So, so when an individual, so for me, I had really good resolution with, I used to have ovarian cysts all the time. And, and it was just, I'm going to say a, a bonus. I wasn't why I was set out to do acupuncture. But since then, I've seen so many people have, you know, better periods, even fertility. We see a lot of improvement in the fertility space. Um, with with In our clinic, when individuals are dealing with chronic inflammatory disorders, why do they have, why are the sex hormones impacted? Are they correlated with inflammation at all? Well, it's all coordinating with the brain. You know, we have, you know, the, the hypothalamus, we can see controls all the other hormones. So, I think it's everything has to be in homeostasis. Everything has to be in a balance. So if you have a dysregulation on one, it's going to affect everything else going on in your body. And that's what the problem is. So these patients have so many things going on. It's not just, you know, the pain, not just, you know, the lack of sleep, the hormone imbalance, the orthostatic hypotension, the myalgias. They just have so many things that we have to sort of address things little by little. 
And I think I'm just free because I can do all that in one week. Wow. And, 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 and is it because it supports the, that communication pathway? Yes. And it's also, you know, it's been proven to, to be anti-inflammatory, you know, how it improves the circulation. So it's been a, it's been, it's a multi-targeted tool, I would say. So it looks more, it treats the body holistically. Not only does Chinese diagnostics look at the body as a whole unit and, and even a unit experiencing things outside of the unit, right? <laughs> I always think that's like people, people will study the heart or they'll study, you know, the liver and not even give a blink to the air we breathe or the, you know, uh, the water we're drinking or things like that. But acupuncture treats the whole body. And, and how do you know what, where to put the needles? You know, when a patient first comes in in Chinese medicine, you learn how to, you know, check their pulse. You go by their pulse and you go by sort of, I would say it's like you do a scan, you know, you look at their tongue, you look at their eyes, you look at their emotions. And all those coordinate with different organs in Chinese medicine. So knowing when you have the organs that you're going to treat, you target the needles and those meridians of those of those organs effectively. And, and if your com- patient is, it could either be you know a deficiency or an excess. So they could have an excess, or say, of liver. Well, then you want to make sure that when you needle your patient, you know, you're stimulating the needle for the acupuncture point is working for an excess condition versus a uh, deficiency. And then you play with the time that you need the needles. And I mean, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful art. It's fascinating. It's amazing. And, and it's, I think sometimes we're so results driven at the Institute. Like we want our patients to feel better. And I think sometimes that's the motivation for us to integrate all these different modalities. But the, Acupuncture is really fast in its response. I mean, I know that it takes a lot of time in its rebalancing, but I've seen people that have acupuncture treatment that sleep better that night. Yes, that's true. Now, does it last for the consecutive nights? I mean, it could for some. Depends on what's the underlying, you know, sleep disorder or sleep problem. But in our patient population, you're right. But they take so many medications that the whole idea is, you know, it's it's easier to do acupuncture with these. They don't have any side effects. Right. Any, you're not adding on another medication. You're doing a modality which is going to improve everything else. And hopefully the goal is to get them off some of the medications. Eventually. That's great. And and it worked. That's what, like I said, it was when I was putting together a protocol for myself, it was really a cornerstone in getting my body back to balance because it was out of balance. And that's why I needed, you know, crisis intervention medication. And as it's it's not like it just automatically goes back into balance, or at least it didn't for me. It wasn't like one day I could just say, "Oh, I'm done with prednisone." <laughs> I wish, you know, um, it's not like an like a surgery when you're dealing with a complex illness. It's not like you fracture your tibia or your femur, or you have surgery and you give it six weeks and you're done. There's a there's a rebalancing as people come out of that particular disease state. I, I I see that a lot. What inspired you to bring acupuncture into the institute? Again, it's just that I see that these patients are on so many they go through so many avenues to get help, and then they come here and they're taking a list of medication, and they take a handful of supplements. Supplements are not bad, in the contrary, it's better than to be honest, but but the idea is, you know, bringing something, offering them something that they can do that doesn't involve a side effect or an interaction with another medication or drug, and they will get better. You know, it's hard to say when we're taking 10, 12 drugs, what is it really that's making an effect? That's a very valid because it seems like sometimes you go down that route and if something doesn't work, another one's prescribed to see if that works, but sometimes we don't pull out the one that didn't work in the first place, or it has side effects, and then you need to take medications for the side effects. It's very sad. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really hard to watch patients that are struggling with complex diseases, which means there's a complexity in the symptom profile, and doing anything and it not affording relief. I mean, that's the hardest thing for me to watch. Is is to your point? What would you say when our patients come in about how many? How many different doctors do you think they've seen before they land in our clinic? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I mean, 
Augen haben. Ja. 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 That was the thing that really shocked me when I came into the the to our clinic was listening to how many physicians that these patients of yours had seen prior to coming into the clinic. I I was and and that's wonderful to have a Rolodex of practitioners on a, on a team. Like there's nothing wrong with that except for there wasn't resolution. So so it it takes a village, right? It can take. That's why at our institute we have such a multidisciplinary approach and we really encourage our community. So so all these people that are listening out here I'm a big advocate for you having a a team to get you to wellness. And and Dr. Hunko, we, you know, we have that under our under our home, under our umbrella. I guess people out there that are listening right now, what would you say to them if they don't feel like they have a team? What would you say as people have come into our clinic and they've seen 10 to 15 doctors before they ever get to us, which is would sound awesome if they were feeling amazing, right? Like you think about a, fo- a football player or a professional basketball player, and maybe they have 10 to 15 doctors, but they're at the prime of their physicality. We're getting patients that come in with 10 to 15 doctors and they feel awful, which is why they're flying in or driving in to see us. When you have people out there that are struggling right now, I think really important, the acupuncture and the Chinese medicine piece helps re-regulate the body and re-regulate it to the original original insult, all the um, disease states that have compiled on top of it, all of the drug interactions, you know, all of that. At some point, we need to start creating some sort of a homeostasis in the body. If people are feeling really out of control in their health and wellness, what are some things that they can do in their own world if they can't see an acupuncturist right now? Because you incorporate so many modalities. Well, I think number one is being able to relax, you know, and, and pacing, you know, pacing. So meditating, meditating is amazing because meditation also gets you into that kind of thing you Um, certain exercises, breathing exercises are going to also activate your vagus nerve. Um, tai Chi, Qigong, I know those might be difficult for a lot of patients who can't really ambulate, but they're sitting, you can be sitting and exercising. Just getting that, getting that blood flowing, you know, getting that blood moving, you know, working on the inflammatory response by, you know, activating the person to get a nervous system and being able to heal. That's great. Eating That's healthy one. is important. Eating healthy is important. So let me review, review those for a second. So we talked about sleep and stress. And a lot of times in our Friday clinics, you know, we we focus on a lot of the complexity of maybe their neuroimmune labs, or maybe um, the complexity of their their diagnosis that they received from somebody before they come in the door. But it all seems to go back to if we can regulate their stress hormones and we can regulate their sleep hormones, that we have a fighting chance, right? To to get their body back on a track to wellness. Would you say that those are kind of the two most important? Um, contributing factors to people getting well? I definitely address sleep on everybody. I see. Yeah. I think you come in for a back, back aid. Right. And first, you know, I'm going to ask you about your sleep. How are you sleeping? Your sleep hygiene, you know, what do you do? You, you know, play on the phone before going to bed. You read on the phone. You know, you wake up in the night. You know, how many hours are you getting a good long sleep? And why is sleep so important? Why 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 can't I not go on to I mean, hey, you know, I eat really well, um, I exercise, but I sleep three hours. Why why can't I get away with that? <laughs> it to be like that. What happens what happens while I'm sleeping that is restorative, regenerative, or anti inflammatory? Like wh- why is it hormones that are secreted, you know? Cool. We have we have growth hormone which is secreted, which is good. You know, we have a lot of a balance that's going on in life. And we need that, you know, we need that homeostasis to go on while we're sleeping. I had a hormone doc that I was working one, with one time, and she said, sleep like a baby, wake like a baby. She said, if you don't care about anything else, it's anti-aging. I went, oh, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> but also, I think those those um, those stress hormones have such an impact, like you said, on, on the inflammatory hormones and insulin. So we have a lot of people that have been tuning in to this podcast. And for the first time, they feel like they're getting some hope that things can change for them. I think sometimes we see it 
a lot in our clinic. And so we're, we have a really strong conviction about it. But for those people out there right now that are really struggling, can you give them some hope? Why do you feel so strongly that they can get better? Well, the mindset is very important also. Yes. I think we need to believe that there is hope. But there is. And, I mean, if they don't live near us and they can't see us, there's a lot of other good practitioners out there. You know, you just can't. I think that the main thing is never using hope. And always saying, you know, looking at the, it's either you look at the glass half empty or half empty. Right. Get us start looking at the glass more full than ever. That's really right. Kind of big. And right. And I see, I love Dr. Hunko that you're doing a lot of, you know, lectures and, and doing these podcasts because I think people maybe don't feel like they have a resource. And, and by you being so generous with your time, it's going to, you know, just that in itself is going to help people so much. So if I were sitting here today and I couldn't get into acupuncture, it either wasn't in my town, it was not uh, financially an opportunity, although thank God we're seeing more and more um, insurances cover it, which is great. Um, but, you know, insurance itself is a whole, that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> but But how can a person help themselves on a daily basis? Give me two things that I could add into my daily routine that aren't going, you know, I, I just think of when I was in the, the, the thick of things. It was like one more thing on my list always felt so overwhelming. But what are two simple things that I could do that you think will make a trajectory change in, my, in, in where I'm at? I think, again, the mind. I think the way you look at it, you have to keep that hope going. And you do do things on a daily basis, I think, you know, working on your breathing exercises. And if you live somewhere that you can go outside, go out barefoot. Ooh. You know, get some grounding. <sighs> you know, get get some sunlight. You know, you don't want to stay indoors because then you know the whole depression and the psychological, it just gets worse. I, uh, I'm a big advocate on going outside, walking barefoot. And and you know what? I'm so glad you mentioned those. I, I actually gave me chills because I sometimes I I do I get overwhelmed by the list of things that I'm supposed to do to take care of myself. And that just brought that like kind of childlike permission that you just gave us permission to take our shoes off, go outside, walk on the ground, get a little sunshine. I just feel happier just like kind of visualizing that right now. That's so good. That's so good. You know, we have so many nutrients in the dirt and the grass and the sand, depending where you live. And even on grounding mats for those who live in buildings, you know, that like don't have the ability to go outside. I mean, all that is great. You know, you want to create that balance inside your body that's unbound. And our bodies are still struggling. When, when, when I'm going to say this differently, when we're struggling, our bodies are craving and seeking some kind of balance. I mean, especially when we have medications on board or have had surgeries, you know, where we have scar tissue, our bodies are constantly craving that. And so something as simple as walking outside barefoot, the more you're struggling, the more you're going to respond to that. Because I, I, we just find the further along or the complex the patient is, the more that body is desperate for something to create a new homeostasis or a new balance. And if they can interact that way, it's free, it's pleasurable, and it really does make a huge impact. Right. right. And, the, you know, I love, um, God, I was trying to think, I was reading this the other day and they were talking about, you know, the biggest thing when you're struggling is to try to get your grounding, you try to get grounded, try to be on sure footing, right? And look in your environment of, of where you can find sure footing. And maybe it's not there financially, or maybe it's not there relationship wise, but find something, get sure footing. So I just love that you suggested that. I think everybody's going to, do better. Everybody can yes. go out outside and work. Here. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I love it. Dr. Hunko, promise me you'll come back and teach some breathing exercises. I They are so powerful. And in the meantime, we're going to get a little sunshine. We're going to work on our mindset. We're going to get barefoot and get out on the, uh, on the ground. Um, but I think I think the the next step, I think I would really love everybody to have access to the power of your teaching with breathing exercises. It, can I get you to do that for us? Right. You guys, my goal is that you have access to as much as we can possibly give you access to 
without even coming to our clinic. Our dream for creating this podcast was to give you hope that there is a better future for you and your health. We see it every day. We believe it. We believe in you. We believe in the power of your body. And also we want to help you. We want to be that source and that resource for you to have these kind of gems and access to brilliant doctors like Dr. Hunko that we get to be with in clinic every day that I know you guys um, will only be healthier for knowing her. So Dr. Hunko, I can't thank you enough for being here. I, I know I'm, I would like to just steal you away and keep you every day. I know you're busy, but thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Breathing next, breathing. <laughs> I'll go take my shoes off. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Dr. Hunko. 